I guess what it comes down to is that these symbols and, and just our connection to them and how they've changed throughout history based on, you know, these agendas and this sort of, uh, sort of the way these archetypes have played out. Um, I, I kind of come from the source, uh, you know, starting from the beginning to where we are today as to how this all sort of unfolded and what the symbols are telling us and what sort of needs to be done for us to restore it in ourselves and as a frequency that um, can really, you know, shift things on the planet. I was also talking about, you know, the galactic core and the immortal, you know, energies of um, how we're connecting with the, the planet Earth and, you know, the cosmos and ourselves and how um, in order to break free of the things that have kind of thrown us into duality and change the actual Kabbalah tree from having a root system to not having a root system where the underworld exists beneath the divine pair, sort of sort of leading us to have to go through a level of initiation and death and rebirth to really reconnect to you know, our, our, really restore our DNA. And um, so right now, the Venus transits and, you know, a lot that has been left by ancient civilizations, higher civilizations, have revealed a lot in terms of how these symbols and how our path and our reconnection um, has to do with the restoration of all this. And the Venus transits are really, you know, sh shifting the way the pentagram works and the way, you know, that symbol has been misused by the global elite and and how that represents Venus and these Venus transits are sort of cre creating a, a pentagram in the sky and the process of all these different transits that have been going on for thousands of years is actually turning it upright again and, and assisting, you know, the, the, the heavens to really be anchored on Earth. And this isn't just something we sit around and wait for. We are co-creative in this process. And so when we think of our DNA and the junk DNA and dark matter and all, all how, how all these different things connect, the tree of life, the pentagram, the, the labyrinth, and all these different things that sort of help us and guide us, um, we can see that really the inner work um, is about activating um, that awareness to step out of the, the level of control that there is. And, and we're multidimensional beings that have access to so much more. And uh, so we're really coming, into, coming to terms with that and, and seeing that we're at a major tipping point between... Um, you know, really just having ourselves be controlled or really stepping into something where, like an immune system, we are able to activate an incredible frequency that is coming into our realm, you know, from the galactic core, and is, you know, the, the goddess energy, too, um, coming into balance with the male. And this is not just something that's just happening. It's actually a co-creative process that many have taken on for thousands of years as beings on Earth. And um, so like an immune system, once it reaches a certain level, it is able to eradicate all the germs and the disease and the parasites and all these, these agendas. And they're able to launch us into a higher dimensional frequency where we see ourselves more as dreamers. And we see these symbols more as, you know, guideposts and also a part of our matrix, our, our organic, natural, um, just like who we truly are. Uh, and so when we see how our DNA has been manipulated by something called the Archon, where they have sort of taken away our connection and sort of deleted it and, and sort of used themselves as puppet masters instead, then we can really begin to activate it through this awareness, not just through food, not just through, you know, going through a lot to, you know, um, make it happen. It's simply, you know, waking up and taking responsibility and not waiting for some leader or savior to do it or some alien race to take over and make it happen, but to really step up to the plate and, be co-creative so that we are invoking and calling in our guide, but we're, they're working along with us. And that's extremely important too. So I said a lot and I said it way better, <laughs> but obviously the call drops. So I'm going to stop there. Um, but yeah. It, yeah, it goes into history, it goes into archetypes, it goes into the ancient civilizations, and just this progression, this alchemical evolution that we're on that is mixing light and dark forces and, and really resolving duality um, and creating more of it you know, you can't make one or the other go away, but it's more about creating a marriage rather than this disharmony. But anyway, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, now. awesome. That That's so well said. And I... I want to clear up one thing. I I'm still learning about this this technology of of uh, screen sharing. I thought that I was going to be able to share my screen, but apparently it's picking up only my video feed in this in the Skype thing. So I'm hearing that it's actually my video which is going through the site. So I don't get the idea that I intended like you know to have this like focused on streaming me because you know, at all like that that's just kind of how the technology is happening so i kind of want to throw that disclaimer out there uh, it's it, motivation for people to invent something better 
Well, I think that there is some really cool stuff that we can already access. Um, it's just a matter of finding it and, um, you know, linking up before and, and testing it out. But, but hey, we'll, we'll make it work. So, yeah, Laura, um, things that stuck out um, with that that I'd love to hear from Randy on are, like, the ideas of, well, first, the multidimensional reality in relation to duality and how, like, this fusion of polarities is happening and, you know, in sacred union. And so maybe that relates to, right, like the bridging of science and spirit and also this, you know, conventional form of mathematics with a new form of mathematics that that is related to vortex math. Yeah, well, it all fits together. I mean... Anytime you're coming towards a convergence, which is how everything moves, everything moves towards or away from its convergence. And um, it moves in a spiral like that. And so whenever you're coming towards the convergence, which I think most people agree, um, all prophecies aside, I think most just observers of the state of the world agree that we're coming to some sort of convergence at some point in the near future, certainly within our lifetimes. Um, and uh, that's when you start to see that, contra that contradiction and the paradox and the concentration of positive and negative. And um, it's part of a birthing process. Uh, it's a painful process and it's usually a messy process but uh, what's produced from it is uh, very beautiful and uh, so I, you know I don't know that I could state it any better than what was already stated um, you know but certainly everything Laura is talking about it's all interwoven I mean, for me my whole guidance you know, that I talk about, I think, in some of the videos that I had up, is that is led by the alchemical symbolism before I even knew what the alchemical symbolism was, you know. I mean, my whole journey personally started when I was around the age of five, and I got really obsessed with this question about what a human soul looked like because I, I wanted to be able to ascend to heaven and to see my father there who had passed away and um, in the process of trying to understand what the soul looked like so I would know how to recognize it. Oh, Laura, oh, uh, you back? I'm here. <laughs> Alright, cool. All Where right. was, it? was I? You didn't lose me too far there, did you? No, just for a second. Keep. Okay. When I encountered the symbol of the caduceus, which is commonly, you know, known as the medical symbol or, you know, the serpents wrapped around the pole with wings at the top, I immediately latched onto that as what the image of the human soul looked like. And without going into all the details of the story, you know, I used to imagine this as a child of that age, resting near the base of my spine, and I imagined that it would gradually when, when I died, that it would come to life, that it would ascend up the spine and out of my head where the wings would open and it would fly into heaven where it landed on cloud nine. Hmm. And uh, I lived for those years in my early life with a connection to that symbol that was so deep and rich and emotional in its nature. And then I kind of forgot about it until I got to be, you know, a young teenager and I started reading about yoga, uh, took up an interest in yoga, and I read this exact thing which I had uh, visualized as a kid about the serpent and showing the same image of the caduceus and how it's supposed to ascend up the spine and even connected it with the number nine. And so that subsequently led me on a journey through all the symbolisms of all the world's faiths and philosophies and, and seeing the same symbols everywhere of this cosmic serpent or the Ouroboros um, which is encompassing the beginning and the end and which is the Taurus and um, I believe that it's the primal basis for everything in the universe uh, whether it's 
philosophical or, or, or actual physics. Right. So, yeah, the the idea of the cosmic ser- ser- the cosmic serpent. I'm, I'd be really interested to hear both your takes on, you know, this idea of the reptilian influence in on Earth now as you know even a a current species that exists on Earth. Um, but then there's also this ancient lore around the serpent, as you're saying, in, in the symbolism. And then, you know, there's, as, as life in the universe um, exists, and as, it's, as we're interacting with it, I, I'd, I'd be really interested to hear what you guys think about how, what that means. I mean, are we all influenced by by the reptilian consciousness or the or the serpent conscious consciousness and is that I, I don't want to say it's necessarily a positive or negative thing I think that there's this 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 idea out there that you know reptilian is equals evil um, and I don't necessarily know the answer to that question um, I've I, there, there's so there's so much hearsay out there about it and about what is really going on right now in terms of that engagement. So, yeah. Um, Laura, oh, you want to start with that, Laura? Yeah, sure. Um, well, this is very interesting because one has to see everything like a body or just how one thing can't really function on its own unless it's informed by something else. The reptilian uh, energies aren't really informed by spirit, by the mother source. Um, it's kind of cut off the whole archonic system is based on trying to be superior to that which is already superior to it. It's like these inferior beings are trying to run the show, even though they might have the technologies or the power as, you know, beings that seem to come from elsewhere or are underground or are here amongst us. They're all free, really. Um, they are not, you know, on an ethereal level, on a spiritual level, they are not superior. Um, but when one thinks of Tiamat and the dragon, you know, goddess, and um, other, you know, the Quetzalcoatl, the, the, the feathered serpent, mm-hmm. and the role that the, 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 the snake played in Eden, and Kundalini, and that sort of thing, you have a higher octave of, of the same sort of frequency, because it's informed by spirit, it has the whole sort of system down, this is where it connects to the tree of life, and like the tree of good and evil, which is basically the tree of duality, you have the root system, you have the heavens as the branches, and you have the whole spine, you know, of the tree, and everything's kind of connected, well, everything is connected. You've got Kether the Crown, and then goes into Einsoff, and it's like, you know, everything's working. There's balance, there's harmony, there's immortality, there's no disease. You know, everything's paradise. And then this all gets kind of cut off, and there's this good-evil duality. And we don't need to use the term evil, but we can see things being split apart. Science, spirituality, man, woman, you know, sort of this divorce that's happened, you know, and, and, and humanity for nature, in a sense. Um and it's not that that's what everybody has wanted, but it's been woven into our culture to create this sort of separation duality and look to God and something external, which it is and isn't, but it's also, you know, within us. And it's not a very integrated process when we're always in separation mode. And so that's when the reptilians sort of jumped into that, and that's kind of part of their creation, the chief archon known as the Demiurge by Gnostics. And what's, you know, happened is that sort of serpent energy is running amok without being informed by the higher consciousness. The tree is not in its state of balance and harmony where everything, you know, that is a part of it has, you know, a connection to that higher wisdom and higher knowledge. And so when those things aren't being informed, their whole goal is power, dominance, and to feed off of emotions and to manipulate. And, you know, that's where the Illuminati and the Gnostics really split off, you know, way back when. The Illuminati was more concerned with behavior modification, mind control, and influencing the populace to go a certain direction, to have these agendas and these ideas for new world order, sort of acting like God, but not in a way that promoted, you know, unity, peace, and empowerment. You know, just a lot of manipulation and and BS. I I don't mean to say that, but you know what I mean. And then the, the others, you know, that were sort of exiled, including the goddess, you know, represented unity consciousness, you know, peace, balance harmony and the tree of life really and so we've been sort of on this path to sort of rebuild and sort of it's like you can't destroy anything or make it go away but you can certainly put the puzzle pieces together how they belong so that everything is informed by the superior being supreme being which should be like a source energy which exists within us and so yes we all have a connection to the reptilians it's a part of our brain um but right now it's like the dominance the power the power hungriness that part is running around without 
you know, really being, um, like, brought into discipline and order by the, the higher consciousness that it needs to connect with, and that's where we come in, and that's where humanity comes in, that when we awaken and we, we run that frequency, it sort of overpowers those that are kind of running the show now, the reptilian energies, the their agents, and everything that is, is being put you know, they're puppeteers to them, they are sort of put back in their place and they, you know, sort of become, I wouldn't say like the force of Kundalini because Kundalini is already active in many of us. It's not, the Kundalini and reptilians are very different, but um, the serpent energy has, you know, it has like two faces to it in a sense. And um, the Demiurge, compared to Christ Sophia or, or the divine pair, it's similar to Seth, similar to Samuel, similar to sort of the fallen Lucifer. It's, it's like a, it's like the twin brother of Christ, you know. And there's many stories that sort of confirm that there was another brother. You don't, we don't have to call it the evil brother, but something that, you know, allowed matter to be such that we would be in this period of time of 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 being kind of architects of heaven on earth, where, in an alchemical way, we would create a paradise on earth through these levels of deaths and rebirths. One could call them miscarriages of the great mother earth, um, where that underworld journey, which represents the Venus transit, because Venus is the morning and evening star, is this continual, just like those symbols of going, you know, death and rebirth, but there is no beginning or end. It's all actually cycles until, you know, the, everything is composted so much that the soil is so strong that it can rebirth the tree of life in the restored union and balance after going through everything that isn't that in order to learn how to never make those mistakes again. And this is really a strengthening process, not anything that's really out to destroy us. But our perceptions have to stay aligned and be informed by source energy to stay in, in, in line with that. Awesome. Yeah, that those are great words. You know, Randy? <laughs> if I, can, I, I don't think I can match that, but uh, I, I was going to relate this one thing that just popped into my mind. Um, you know, I, I'm the first to admit that I have no idea what's going on in the world. I'm sure that whatever it is, it's way uh, crazier than anything I can imagine. But um, I did find this one story interesting that was related in the book, The Cosmic Serpent by Jeremy Narby. And uh, I won't, you know, quote it or I don't know um, the specifics. I can't remember exactly the story, but it was like this anthropologist who had gone out in the rainforest um, and this guy was just a totally straight academic and he took the ayahuasca and he went through this whole thing of this vision of these reptilian beings, you know, <laughs> crashing the spaceship into earth and coming here and then hiding themselves within our own bodies, um, inside of the DNA code. And, uh, I, you know, the story is related much better than what I just said, but uh, I, I always recommend that story to people because I just think it's interesting that it, it really uh, hit that guy out of left field. Like, he had no idea what to make of that, you know? So it wasn't like uh, something coming from the Internet. It's so true, too, though. I mean, our DNA, I mean that whole junk DNA and, and everything connected to that relates to that manipulation of, of, of our genetics. And that does relate to the tree of good and evil it does relate to duality and higher consciousness relates to the res restoration of it and um you know if one traces things to sumerian times and sees what happened as far as tiamat getting slayed by marduk that was you know a big dragon and uh but you know obviously it had offsprings which we can consider you know anunnaki and and where the reptilian sort of you know lower agendas took place but if one sees it as a very dysfunctional family it's like why in such a close-knit family where there's enki and enlil they're supposed to be brothers cain and abel you know being a later example did, you know, this turn into some sort of war similar to Osiris and uh, Horus and Seth. And so I just wanted to add that in. But it, that's a really profound story you just shared, by the way. So, yeah, I've got to check well, that out. Well, and I will say from my own experience that, in my own experience of altered states of consciousness, that the uh, serpent motif is definitely there. And, and it's not just me. I mean, everybody seems to to experience it, or at least a large majority of the people who enter into those states. And, uh, you know, I was blown away by that, having grown up with this Caduceus thing, and then being able to later in life enter into these states, uh, and actually those things presented themselves as a reality. And uh, I've 
you know, there are much deeper mysteries than anything I can articulate on or even really understand. But I do find it fascinating the prevalence of that symbol and archetype. Absolutely. Right. So I'm just trying to think from a perspective of someone who all of this is completely foreign to. Um, because it, it still seems that, you know, there's even, you know, grounding it in like dinosaurs or something like that. Like what, you know, for, for a lot of people, their only context for reptilians is, you know, dinosaurs. And, and, and I, don't, I don't know if, I, I guess this is going into somewhat different territory, but like, what would be the connection between these physical reptiles that have manifested on Earth in the form of dinosaurs and the more energetic reptilian um, kind of negative, in quotes, I don't want to use negative positive, but form of consciousness? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think I posted something that you commented on. I was talking about... Uh, something similar, um, maybe not, but I don't know. Do you want to go with that, Randy, or you want me to go, or, or Rand? Well, you know, as far as the dinosaurs, you know, I do think uh, one interesting theory that is put forth about the dinosaurs, um, I can't remember the guy's name. He used to do Batman comics, and then he got into this whole expanding Earth um, phenomena and did all the scientific research, and he relates it to the dinosaurs. He's, he's making the point, essentially, that the Earth is expanding, which is known. And that Pangea really was just the fact that the Earth was originally all just one mass that's been breaking apart as it's expanding, that you can connect it on both sides. And his point, the dinosaurs and all that, a, a T-Rex has bone density no more than a human being. And that means with something that size, if it was running faster than 10 miles an hour and took a turn, it would rip its own head off. So that means, and that's under our current gravitational situation, um, that means that gravity on the Earth must have been much less at the time of the dinosaurs. And, you know, you see all these huge plant life and giant fungus and all this stuff, so... You know, I think as far as the giant, you know, alien kind of serpent thing that maybe uh, that part is is explained, or at least it's it's an interesting idea concerning that. Um, now, as far as the alien reptilian presence, you know, I, I don't know. I, I I do I do know that there's something flying around up there. Um, and probably a whole lot here on the earth too that we don't know about. I mean, really, we think we know a lot because we watch TV and we see movies and we meet people from Saudi Arabia or wherever, you know, but the truth is we're barely even aware of 30 feet around our own environment. And, um, you know, the idea that anybody really knows what's going on to me is a joke. Even the top of the top, you know, and the Illuminati or whoever, they don't have any idea what's going on. They're all just playing a part in an intelligently woven plot that is far greater than any one human could ever imagine or manipulate. Um, but we can all co-create, as Laura was saying, by you know, working our own magic by discovering our own inner magnitude. And I think, you you know, the manifestation of spirit and ultimately in its most perfectly resonant form, which is the manifestation of God, um, is, you know, all of creation moves with the manifestation or the woman of this manifestation <laughs> uh, of, of God, of, of spirit. And uh, that's the potential of the human being, and I think through that you can overcome anything. Any, because, you know, the teaching that I believe in, and just from my own experience, my own spiritual life has led me very much to 
the firm belief that all of the worlds and all of the beings and all the different worlds and all the different environments and everything that ever was and ever will be um, is all written into our bodies, into the human temple as the, as the perfect vessel for spirit. And um, so that's where I'm at on that. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to add, too, to that. Um, what's very interesting is, you know, when one really sees just the conditions that really began everything, whether you want to, you know, talk about the cosmic egg or the Big Bang or how many Big Bangs have there been or was there a bang before the Big Bang, it's like n none of us have the answers. And when we can accept nothingness and that we really are just, you know, it's better to realize that we're connected to everything and everything is sort of a part of us every alien race i mean we're from different star systems we've been all over the cosmos and you know and and we all just decide to take bodies here on earth here and there and we might have you know stayed someplace else for a while some other dimension i mean we're, we're all coming from all over the place we all have our stories and history um but when one sees and i posted something about this recently the primordial sea of chaos that's really the fertility of the imagination and any time a thought form is focused on or believed in you know, it creates reality, and if it's believed in long enough, it'll actually take form and, and, and create pictures and bodies and movement, and, and physical manifestation starts to happen, but everything, is, you know, happens first in the unseen realm of thought, of idea, I mean, even, you know, creation, it's like there's bythos, which was deep thought, you know, and then forethought, um, and then afterthought or whatever, the logos, and, and, and if one really studies, you know, from many different perspectives, just the whole way creation comes about, you know, we can really see, okay, well, we're in the same sort of, um, we have the same things made available to us. I mean, that is our blueprint. That is in our DNA. So we can think that it's been altered or messed with, but really it's just been veiled. It's just been, you know, covered up or just somehow manipulated from our awareness and put us into a, a bit of amnesia somehow. But really, when I think of everything that's manifested, including dinosaurs and just these alien races, you know, I just see that on a collective level, we are sharing an imagination that we can look at somebody else's life and see that they're living a nightmare and that somebody else is living, you know, total bliss and that, you know, how can two people be experiencing such different realities in the same one? Then you mix it all together and then we have this collective energy that we call planet Earth where we can see the news and we can see what's happening. And then if we look deeper, we can see many, much of it is false flags, much of it is just a setup, much of it is just to take our power. And, um, and so we have to think like dreamers. We have to, you know, use our consciousness as a way to shift out of things and our and our perceptions and our imagination, utilizing the primordial sea of chaos and all the energy streams and thought forms and dimensions out there to start to lift ourselves out of the entrapment we might feel we're in by lightening the load, by not letting the gravity of it all take let us take it too seriously or make it too real. Because the more we make it real, the less we're dreaming, the more we're stuck in a reality that might be somebody else's creation that really isn't something we've intended. So we have to really just make ourselves empowered as creators and, and realize that everything is really began with the imagination and that any form that we see around us is a projection, not really real, um, but it sure feels real. And our bodies, you have receptors, you know, but our bodies have wisdom and they teach us. So when we feel pain, it's not so we suffer, it's so that we listen to what it has to tell us. And that's why we even have disease. And really, everything that's an adversary or something that creates strife, conflict, is actually helping us to awaken and uh, it's birthing us out of the darkness that it represents. Yeah. Um, so, in, Randy, from what you said about, you know, even like the higher powers on Earth, like not really knowing what's going on, like, I mean, it's hard. It's it's almost impossible to. to Bill, can you give me one second? My wife's at the door. I think she's. Oh yeah, out. absolutely. Right back. <laughs> um, so, but then Laura, so we have that like impossibility, and everyone out there, um, we have that like impossibility of knowing the the full nature of reality, Looking and yet, back. and right. yet. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll repeat that quickly for you, Randy. Um, so like we have this almost inability to know everything but at the same time we have this structure on earth now with you know different groups and different people and um, I guess if you want to call it uh, records or archives that do have this information that can be accessed whether on a physical disk 
or it's blending more into like the holographic realm where it's you know kind of not entirely physical like in the cloud <laughs> which is both a physical technological term and more of a spiritual techno technological term so Laura I, I'd be really interested in your comments um, and then Randy on uh, on on kind of how how we pursue that information and like what what you could say about you know literal literally like the people that we're talking to now seem to be in like Laura coming forward with information that she has on on what's going on in certain black ops um, you know we're seeing this full purging of of information with the whole you know um, WikiLeaks and all the different out layers of um, kind of transparency that are that are coming up. All right. right. So, so basically, what you're asking is how how to access all the information and and. Um, right. Sorry, I kind of left that as not so much of a question, but it, I I mean. Um, in terms of strategy for you know enlightening the planet and and everybody being aware of what is actually going on in our solar system in in our reality because i guess that's somewhat of the goal for everybody to evolve their consciousness and you know and potentially physical being as well to a point of really knowing where we are and why we're here right and the things we're all at different stages you know, some of us would rebel, you know, against anybody taking our rights away and our freedom away. And other people trust the system out there and say it's for our benefit and, and we should just go along with it. And so it's really hard to, to really awaken people that are comfortable with their TV and their life and their job. And they don't really feel challenged yet because it hasn't hit home. And they might just still be going along with things. And then, you know, compared to the person that's had it all taken away or been manipulated or, you know, discovered truths or had children that were involved in things that, you know, where, where it's something close to home, like, you know, the, the local priest molested your kid or, you know, or uh, you were scanned and at an airport and you were just so offended by the way you were treated and you really just start to want to do something because there's this inner need to not be controlled and to not be abused and to not be mistreated. And, and so when that really starts to hit people and when it really starts to hit home, people are naturally going to want to stand up for themselves. But until it really hits home, I think people think, you know, they're basically taken care of and everything's fine and these other stories and agendas and black ops stuff is is really in people's imagination or it's all fear-based or fear-mongering and this and that. And I'm not a fear-monger, I'm a truth-teller, and, and I've got nothing but positive things to share, even though I've been you know, up against some very dark things um, that, that I almost wasn't able to break free from. Um, but now I knew I would. But <laughs> you can't fear death. I mean, that's, that's really important. And so uh, you know, a lot of the um, misrepresentation of energies out there have put us in a state of fear, and, um, but fear that we don't even recognize, we just live by it. We, it's like so woven into who we are in our culture that we don't really recognize that it's built on fear because we can be perfectly happy but have this unconscious fear that sort of rules why we do anything. So we have to just really, you know, search our souls and really look at all the information and, um, you know, but not be controlled by it and not be led astray, not necessarily believe in what one person says but have access to all of it all at once and then take the power to the self and decide, you know, what, what one wants to do because it's, it's really all out there. The, the biggest thing is how can one tell the difference between disinformation and truth, and um, and that's really where uh, you know one's intuition and what, where where when one's really in touch with themselves, their body will tell them, their body will guide them, their their intuition, their um, their instinct to stay alive and their instinct to you know really you know rise out of it. But it's going to be really tough for some people. It's going to come naturally for others. It really depends on your personality type. It depends on you know what stage of growth you're at. Um, but, you know, the doorway is always open for ascension. This is not some kind of train that people are going to miss. It's just multidimensional awareness is about realizing that we're all on different energy streams. We all have sort of different destinations, but yet we're sort of sharing this bubble um, of, of creation together. Um, but, you know, to have access to things like the Akashic Records and the whole historical uh, records and all that, you know, is, is similar to just having a memory and an imagination and re realizing that we are planetary body we are the cosmos we are the underworld womb that that does feel like hell because it's being somewhat manipulated by the global elite but it is where we rebirth restore and regenerate our world but it's also where we feel like we die or we lose our power or we give our power away without realizing it 
And we have to look at all these different levels of creation and, and of our bodies and our minds and our consciousness and, and find out where, where are we putting it and where is it? Where is it located? Where, where are, what are our minds believing and where is our power right now? Who are we giving it to? And just really take the responsibility and take the time to just, you know, just, just awaken to it all because we, we are the totality of everything and we're connected to all of it. But we're in this microcosm world that we tend to think we are have an identity or our personality, but that's really part of the biological human computer, part of the human mind system. And it's and it's yes, we identify with it, but we have to not be so controlled by it and really think in terms of the larger of the spirit being of the ethereal body of the wholeness, so that we can really be a healing agent and a part of the divine will of what's coming, rather than a part of the affliction and a part of the illness that she's going to need to wipe out. Um, when, when, when everything is, is, is really hitting that point, which it is as we speak. So it, like I say to people, you know, think of yourself as a white blood cell. Think of yourself as a healing agent that you're, that you're riding with the will of this planet that wants nothing more than to nurture and take care of us. Her true consciousness is nirvana, is heaven. And, you know, if we buy into the false matrix and any of that, then we're, we're a part of the problem. And so it's simply a choice and, and material wealth and, you know, having stuff and this and that, a lot's going to be ripped away, but this is where we come in. This is where community comes in. This is where we find support with one another and um, create miracles based on just, you know, consciousness, not necessarily belief system, but just simple awareness. We don't have to answer all the questions. We can allow the mystery to be the mystery. One does not have to solve what the breath is. One can just simply breathe. One can smell the flower without having to solve what is inside of it or what the chlorophyll does and what this, you know, it's sometimes it's better to just be and, and just accept the mystery. Um, but it's like we all do, all of us here, we like to jump in and, and, and understand it as well. But to also just to do that, to bring it back to simplicity um, at times, you know? Right. We have to rebuild and we have to, we have to solve parts of the puzzle for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's because if, it, like that constant kind of unrest and un inability to relax during all this chaos I mean that just that feeds it and and so it's really about yeah entering the breath and and you know pursuing the truth and whatever anyone wants to pursue um, in that kind of state of of happiness if, if possible and so and then one other thing I wanted to mention then I have a question uh, for Randy that came in through the chat room um, is that I want to make sure everyone knows that we're, we're at least I'm coming from here is is not of a place like us versus them and I think it's so easy to to have that kind of overlayer be attached to a lot of these kinds of conversations like oh there's the global elite and like they're causing the chaos and and we're and we're trying to fight it and and I feel like it's not really like that it's like we are it we are them we are we're even so far is connected to them in our in our families and our friends so much more than we even realize and even we are contributing to you know so many problems um in certain ways too so it's like like th this if we can i feel like if if they're observing even you know this conversation or any kind of media that is that is looking into these issues i would just want them to know that i'm and we're not trying to, you know, be at war with each other. It's really about working together, and hopefully they will be willing to work with us. Are you guys there? I totally agree. Okay, Randy's back. Cool. Yeah. yeah I totally agree. We're all interconnected. You know, it's like we feed it, they feed it. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an agreement that we have to end, and we can end it harmoniously, and we can end it with you know, just appreciation of like, okay, now we're here. Now, now what? And I think they need us and I think they want our forgiveness. I think they're freaking out and they're afraid of all the secrets they've been keeping and they need us to just gently help them be activated in, in this consciousness because it, it should not be about duality anymore. We're just as wrong if we're, you know, against them. So anyway, I won't, I know Randy, I want to, you, you got a question for Randy, so I'll be quiet. Yeah. Um, cool. Thank you um, for that response. Totally. Um, all right, so this is from John Fellows, who's uh, been been helping out a ton with the setting up this, these, uh, or just kind of testing with these different technologies for conferencing. But so his question is with regard with regard to the rare earth magnets 
he has used. Are these already energized neodymium? Neo Dim is it neodymium or neodymium? Neodymium. Neodymium. Right. All right. So I'm gonna repeat that. With regard to the rare earth magnets, he has used. Are these already energized neodymium magnets, or are the magnets energized within the system? Um. Well. Um, let me, I, I want to make sure I'm not misunderstanding the question, but I, let me just uh, try and answer it maybe without fully understanding. Um, the neodymium magnets, um, basically what was going on with those is that you can create a resonance effect with a neodymium magnet even with a standard electrical coil. Um, but... Um, there seemed to be uh, quite a bit of a difference when uh, Jack started implementing the Abha coil, uh, which was uh, the design that, that I did, and or one of the designs. And um, that one seemed to get this incredible speed and long-lasting effect. Um, now, with the, as far as the energization, what was going on in that experiment is basically that he just energized it for maybe a couple of seconds um, and got the magnet started bouncing around, and then he disconnects the power. You can actually see it if you watch the video where he takes and disconnects the power, and that was Jack Scholl's um, on YouTube, and uh, that, all that stuff is on my website as well. Um, now, you know, the... the the thing is, none of this has been done with high energy, um, you know, and that, that's the next step is to see can that same effect work on uh, an engine or something even much bigger than that. So um, the idea behind the math, now what, what the math is saying, uh, my interpretation of it, is that, uh, and this is also Marco's interpretation, that essentially what we have is a reactionless drive. Um, it's a self-sustaining jet. Uh, so that if these toruses were built properly and activated properly, which has never been done, um, then you will be able to create uh, the torque effect, which is essentially what's being looked for in, um, in the engineering world. Okay, so from my experience did that with answer the question, I hope it did. <laughs> yeah, I so in terms of a magnet being able to hold a charge or where the source of that energy within the magnet comes from, like I mean for an obvious example, like so you you know, you have the refrigerator magnet, the more times you take it on and off, the less the less energy it's able to hold, but where does that original... Yeah. Well, to me, magnetism in general, what's called magnetism, is just the result of different types of vortices. And vortices have... There can be positive vortices or negative vortices. What I call a uh, negative vortice is one that's imploding or it's creating suction, it's pulling things in. Um, and a positive vortice is one that's swirling out and pushing things away. Um... And so you can look at that like male or female um, or however you want to look at it as positive and negative. Um, but they're, it's the way that the vortices are aligning is what makes things magnetic. Um, now, in terms of um, how to start really tapping into that and harnessing it and how to use it, um, you know, that's where the geometric designs come in. But what what exactly was the question, though? So, <laughs> like, so when you're, you know, as a magnet loses its charge, what is happening in the, with the v interaction of different okay. vortices on that magnet? I mean... Well, to me, um, magnetism and spirit... Are, are the most closely related. Magnetism is the only thing, it's the fastest thing that there is. It's the only thing that's fast enough to directly respond and interact with spirit. 
So in the physical world, because we never physically experience spirit, it's invisible and it's undetectable. The way you can know it's there is by the magnetic effects. And the magnetism is the power to control matter. Um, you know, that was the same from the Twilight Zone. Was he controls magnetism, controls the universe. And um, now, you know, in terms of exactly what's happening, I don't know that I'm qualified or know enough about magnets and rare earth materials to, to really comment on that adequately. But um, I, I can say this. Here's an interesting experiment that, you know, some people may have heard of before. It was done by um, Bruce De Palma, who was the brother of the famous director Brian De Palma. And Bruce De Palma was a scientist. I believe he passed away. But he did an experiment where he had uh, two different metal balls and identical mechanical arms. And the only difference between them was that one was spinning and one wasn't. And he found repeatedly in tests that the one that was spinning would fly higher and go farther than the one that wasn't. But by standard physics aerodynamics, there's no explanation for that. Um, and this is because physics today isn't accounting for what shows up perfectly in vortex-based mathematics, which is an emanation off of the axis. It comes from the center of everything out, and it emanates. And emanation is not a term. It's not accounted for in physics. Um, they know about magnetism. They know about electricity. They lump it together in what they call electromagnetism. But really what we're trying to do is create a synthesis of magnetism, electricity, and spirit all together. And so what, what creates magnetism, what creates power, and, uh, is spirit. It's a linear, unbending, non-decaying energy. It's the source of the non-decaying spin of the electron. It keeps, it's the source of all time and vibration and motion and that is truly the source of everything which is the word it's the, the name of God and uh, so you know that's my take on it anyway great Laura did, does that uh, inspire any thoughts over on your end I just it's just so perfect as it is so we can just leave it at that All right. um, so so Randy in in that sense the spinning, the movement is is charge is increasing the charge. Yeah, I think uh, I think the faster and if you get a properly accelerated vortex, um, it taps into this emanation, and that emanation then sustains it and re-energizes it. And what it does is it creates a pulse. Uh, and reality is a pulse, it's a phasing, and, and it's a sequencing. And that's what growth is, that's what aging is. And, and so this energy really is the fountain of youth. Um, I believe if, if my technologies and Marco, Marco's and our technologies were developed to their highest potentials, that you could have eternal life. Um, that, and you know, you can't get much more outrageous than that. Um, because it's literally the source of time. It's the source of how everything sequences. And in order to sequence, things have to pulse. They don't just, it's not just one continuous flow. It's really not a continuum. The continuum is a result of rapid pulsation. Um, it's, that's why I call it the beating heart of existence. And that's when we say the abha. It's literally the BH, the beating heart of everything and so when you can concentrate if you're talking about in terms of physics or technology when you can concentrate extreme amounts of energy into the center of a coil um, without harmonic discordance uh, which causes things to overheat and burn out just like your human body if you get out of um, proper harmony and balance, you can overheat and you die very quickly. Um, and, and you incinerate. And the same thing happens to com supercomputers. It happens to electrical coils. They can't control the temperature. That's why they can't create fusion. 
but by knowing how to harmonically structure movement, you can get maximum acceleration, you can concentrate the heat into the center, and that then engenders or is at, is one with this pulse that then re-energizes and reanimates and allows the system to constantly, at every moment, being born and dying. Um, and that is, to me, the experience of the higher spiritual world and the highest level of reality is this continuous moment that contains all things, birth and death and love and pain and absolute unity with all creation at the same time as realizing that you're the only being that exists. And so it's absolute loneliness as well. And it's the concentration, the alchemical workings of all of that emotional energy together that to me produces the miracle of infinite energy. And so um, we're just going to the extreme of really trying to build it. So. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's really cool. I, I the, the idea of harmonically structured movement, it's... It's really neat to think about that in a, you know, kind of energetic source sense. So, like, for powering our planet and, you know, all the technologies that we're using. And at the same time, thinking of, like, architecture and structure of, like, us as people and, and how we're doing that in the world today. And so it's, like, the way that we're structured is... Kind of almost inherently discordant because it is it's international it's 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 these nations the, the yeah these nations that um you know many ha all have certain merits and but at the same time it's the international situation that is the basis of conflict and so it's like it'll be really neat and this is what we're trying to do here um with Gathering of the Minds is to create a corporation that can help to harmonically structure civilization in, in the sense that it can be a corporation where literally everyone on the planet gets a share of the company. And so... Yeah. It, 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 and we'll all be synchronized and that's the idea so we won't be in discord with one another. Right. So... Um, yeah, and but in in sorry, a little uh, so there, but <laughs> the for like dissonance and like discordance. I'm I'm wondering because I I play music um, and you know we all we all play music to a certain degree. It, but I know what you're getting but at. Like, like you know, it, tensions in music and discord. That right. Makes interesting music, right? Right. So like is. Is the dissonance? It's not necessarily negative, and it's it's almost like we could live in a very um, beautiful world with dissonance in it that we're consciously creating. But yeah. but it's. But I think the idea is maybe this, and this is just my take on. It. I thought about it a lot too. Not that I have the answer. There's certainly something in harmony that affects a person in a unique way. And I find that what we experience as more ethereal emotions usually come from things that come into harmony. But that's not necessarily the case. I mean, certainly one of my good best friends plays in a very abstract jazz band that's full of discord and plays on that. And it's extremely spiritual music. Right. Um, so it's not to rate it as one above the other but um, I think the idea is that creation is so perfect that the reality of who we are is so perfect that any attempt to manipulate it only makes it better um, so any attempt at tampering really in the end the demiurge is God and um, an aspect of God Right, it's the manifestation, the first 
manifestation of God, so that in the end, in many of the Gnostic writings, when the Demiurge removes his mass, you realize it, it was you all along, you know? In some sense, we're God, and in some sense, we're the devil, too. I mean, I'm sure many of us have thought at times, you know? Well, everybody's got to realize that, you know, you look at the whole tarot deck, and these are all energies and archetypes that exist within us. It's how they work together and how they, you know, relate to one another. And each symbol has, you know, a shadow side and a, and a strong side, just like, you know, every astrological sign does. You know, you'll find, you know, like, like say a Virgo, you know, they can worry too much or have anxiety or be too much into perfection to the point of the stress. But at the same time, they're detail oriented and they're great healers. And, you know, you take any sign, you know, like a Leo, you know, full of positive energy and sunshine, but then they have the tendency to be arrogant and this and that. So, you know, you look at the tarot deck, there's the devil card and it's, it's all about connection to nature and, and, and sexual energy and, and power and this and that. But when it's, you know, inflicted by some sort of negative thought form or desire to harm others, that's when, uh, you know, it's up to us to keep it in check. We can't keep looking at everything external that something's happening to us based on, you know, gods and goddesses as much as we need to look to ourselves and realize that all those frequencies are within us and that it's up to us to create harmony with all the archetypal um, forces. You know, it's like if they had a battle in the past, then why are we sitting in the past worrying about it when it's up to us on the inside to say, shake hands and hug. I mean, we have the power to alter everything around us by simply doing the work on the inside. And that's what I did. I, I disappeared for 20 years and off into God knows where. I really left my body and I was on some really crazy kind of astral into the ethers like through these different tunnels clearing out inorganic entity and and really doing like this work on the neurons and just the mind of I, I can't even explain it but i wrote a book so when that comes out maybe it'll make sense but um i just took responsibility i was like you know nobody else is doing this us we're this is this is you know we, we are the masters of our own reality if we allow ourselves to be or we can be the victims of it yeah yeah <laughs> Absolutely. In some sense, we're both. <laughs> exactly. And it's the paradigm also of, you know, I mean, the, 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 the comparison between the master and the victim, the predator and the victim, you know, these sort of scenarios, it's like we, we take our turns with them, abundance and poverty even, and what, what we experience in different lifetimes, how we wear all these different hats, realizing that what it all comes down to is integration and wholeness. And what it all comes down to in the human race is understanding that oneness and unity is not about being the same, it's about the diversity, the web of life, the way that everything is interconnected and works together, when each person embodies their roles is true to themselves, then it helps create order on, on some level rather than, you know, everybody following this one way or joining this one thing. And it's, you know, it's important to have community and pods and groups, but the most important thing is we re retain and, re you know, have our own individuality. Um, but we're really where the oneness is, is on a heart spirit level and just communal harmonious agreement to cooperate and, and give one another respect. Yeah, it's like this relationship between the the multi, the collective, and then the unit, the the individual self, and so it's it's just that interaction that we're that we're playing with, and it, it, it's great. I mean, in in and, and so like we. There's, there's, oh, it's always like the universe or the multi-universe. Like, are there multiple universes, or is it, you know, the cosmos or cosmos, cosmoses? And so it's individual and multi. And yeah, those, are, that was really cool. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of the mystery of the nine. You know, is that it's whole, it's one, self-similar, and yet it represents in some way something other than just one um, and that is that connection between the many and the one and you know in, in the end I don't believe that any created being ever can approach that knowledge you know you can you can you can experience it by experiencing absolute unity with the divine with your with yourself really um, but after you you can never fully remember it because no created being can know it and uh when you're there you're not a created being and so um you know i think that there is no explanation even for the creator you know there's no explanation for this it's a, it's a mystery 
beyond all mysteries. And, you know, people mock little things like what we're doing. This is nothing. I mean, just the reality of everyone's own waking up in the morning should be enough to inspire uh, thinking outside the box for sure because uh, no one is offering us anything that uh, we can't discover tenfold inside of ourselves. Yep. And this is just to go back to the Demiurge real quick. We, we do have to understand, you know, just how the function of Sophia and how the Demiurge was created and how, you know, that forces within all of us and it's a unified field. So we are not able to explain anything, but we can at least accept the fact that in a unified sense, we were there from the beginning. We've been through this from the very beginning and we're, we, there is no beginning or end. And, um, to, to understand it in terms of, you know, like the matrix mentality of just projected thought forms and images and realities that we have agreements to, this one might hold the greatest gravity in this lower dimension. Uh, but at the same time, it's like the, the mystery doesn't care to be solved. It, 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 it's just about learning how to, to journey in it and in the mystery of how to make it the most incredible experience because we all want ecstasy. We all want, you know, people wouldn't have addictions unless they want a pleasure, bliss, ecstasy, and joy. And, um, you know, how do we do that without having to um, go to such just lengths at the sake of our own destruction just to feel good and uh, so I just really think it's mastering the, the journey rather than trying to solve the mystery sometimes yeah absolutely <laughs> awesome well th yeah thanks both uh, of you for coming tonight it's been a lot of fun <laughs> yeah thank, thank you, you Bill. I appreciate it. it yeah so everyone out there check out um, CosmicGaia2012.com and the Abha Kingdom dot com and yeah lauren randy let's stay in touch and, and you know keep supporting each other and and keep rolling absolutely all right peace have a